Just how long should California state legislators be allowed to stay in office? Voters will decide next month when they cast their vote on Prop 28. Here to tell us more about Prop 28 and the politics of term limits is Vlad Kogan, political science PhD candidate at UC San Diego, but soon to be assistant professor at Ohio State University. First of all, congratulations on the, uh, the job. You. And um, tell us, Vlad, what are the current rules with regard to the Assembly um, and, and the State Senate? Sure. So right now, legislators that get elected, they can serve up to three two-year terms in the state assembly. So that's a total of six years. And then they can also serve up to two four-year terms in the state senate, which is another eight years. So if you combine the two, you can serve for a maximum of 14 years. Now, the state senate has only half the number of seats of the state assembly. So only really half of, of lawmakers can serve the full 14 years right now. And how would Prop 28, if passed, change those rules? Prop uh, 28 would do two things. So first, it would let, uh, let legislators serve up to 12 years in a single house if they want to. So they can stay, rather than leaving after six years, they can stay for 12 in the Assembly. And rather than leaving after eight years, they can stay for 12 in the Senate. But it would also say that you know once you've served out those 12, 12 years, you can't go into the other house. So it would reduce the total amount of time you can serve in the state legislature from 14 to 12. So I want you to put on your pro Prop 28 hat right now and tell me what are the arguments to support this proposition? Well, I think the arguments uh, of, on behalf of Prop 28 is to say that really this is a, a balance. This is a compromise between having term limits, which are very popular, which most people want, but also giving legislators the time to become, become experts and really do a better job. I think the problem right now that we have is because the term limits are short, and because folks that run for office are really people that want to make politics a career, we have this game of musical chairs. People come into office, and as soon as they get there, they know six years from then they'll have to be looking for another office, and so they spend a lot of their time looking for their next job. And by extending those time horizons, by giving them 12 years, you really create more incentive for lawmakers to really invest uh, effort and time in becoming good, good policymakers. Now, on the, on the no side, and I think you know, it's an argument that's harder to make, uh, but, you know, people that like term limits may not support this because they see this as really sort of a gradual chipping away at, at the very concept of term limits. That, you know, once you mm. pass this, maybe you open the door to repealing term limits as a whole. Uh, I mean, I think, again, that's a difficult argument to make, partly because I think voters in California are never going to get rid of term limits, at least not in the near future, because, again, they are very popular. So I, I also read when, when I looked at sort of the pro and the against, it seemed to follow along party lines that we had Democrats who, or at least the Democratic mm -hmm. Party who supported this proposition, contributed money, Republican Party that did not. Why would this be a partisan issue? Well, I think there's two explanations. The first is historically term limits in California has been a partisan issue, partly because, you know, one of the ways that term limits was sold to California in 1990 was a way to get rid of a very powerful leader of the assembly, Willie Brown, who was... Uh, you know, very, very strong leader. He used to call himself the Ayatollah of the Assembly. And because he was, he was very good at what he did, uh, a, a lot of the original uh, impetus for term limits in California came from Republicans who really wanted to get him out of office. And the measure, you know, the, the ads really were sold as this is a way to get rid of Willie Brown. So historically, it's really been an issue that has divided, divided along party lines. And I think more recently, you know, some of that may have carried over into the current debate as well. But also, I think there's, there's also an ideological component, that if you are a person that doesn't want big government, that doesn't want strong government, then you know, measures like term limits that in some ways weaken the legislative branch and make it more difficult to get policy made is maybe something that you would support on ideological grounds. Now, you mentioned 1990. This was the first time that California supported term limits? So this, that's when term limits were put into place in California. That's right. Now, but we have a more recent uh, example as well, don't we, going back a few years ago? Yes. Yeah, so about five years ago, we had a ballot measure that was very similar to, to this one. Uh, it would have reduced the overall time from 12 to 14 years, from 14 to 12 years, uh, and allowed legislators to serve uh, in one office. It, it came close to passing, but it was very controversial because there was uh, some provisions in there that really that applied the extension that applied these measures to existing lawmakers. And in particular, it would have allowed th uh, the current leader in one of the houses to really serve 18 years. And that was very controversial. And a lot of the advertising, this was really sold as a backroom deal to, you know, to benefit that particular lawmaker. Now, Prop 28 does not do that. It does not apply to anybody that's currently sitting in office. It would only apply to people elected in the future. And so I think in some ways it fixes what, what many saw as really one of the fatal flaws of the previous measure. Okay. Vlad Kogan, thanks so much. That was a great explanation. Sure. Thanks for having me.